<laughs> All right, J O N. It's about time to get to work, man. Play me some pimping. Play me some pimping. Play me some pimping so we can navigate the excursion. The combination of crack and weed made my eyes. Bleed. Oh shit! Seinfeld coming on. Seinfeld. <laughs> 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 Crazy, yo. I like that shit. Crazy. I get real funky to that. Baby girl. Ow. I want to get real sexual. Yeah. Oh, baby girl. Do it for Rick I want to get sexual. Come on. Oh. Come on. The way you walk and shake your booty when you dance. I like the way it's sitting all in your pants. Tell them, though. I want to smoke some reefer and drink some punch. Oh. And out of all the women in here, are you the baddest one out the whole bunch? Ow! <laughs> Ow! Baby girl, and get sexual. <laughs> that is uh, straight out the city. I want to take you to my house. <laughs> man, and get sexual. Oh yeah, Bubba. <laughs> I can tell by the way you looking at me. You want to go and see what I see. <laughs> I wanna get you naked. Oh, in your birthday suit, <laughs> baby girl. I'm telling you the truth. Oh, I wanna get sexual. That shit funky. Yeah. I want to get sexual. <laughs> to all the Libras in the house. I want to get sexual. <laughs> Make it real nasty, girl. When we get sexual, you can bring your friend. If she want to come too. I got the dick in the balls, baby. The dick's for her, the dick for you. <laughs> Taking my time to make you a freak. And we've been making love about <laughs> six or seven days a week. I said, baby girl, <laughs> oh, I want to get sexual. That shit hard. You can't get me in here. <laughs> baby girl, Double two, baby, I want to get sexual. To all the freaks in the back, let me hear you say. We try to fuck, we try to fuck. We try to fuck, we try to fuck. Freaks in the We try to fuck, we try to fuck. We try to fuck, we try to fuck. Freaks on the front. We try to fuck. We try to fuck, we try to fuck. I tell the freaks on both. We try to fuck. We try to fuck. One more time. Oh, baby girl. Come on. Baby. I wanna get sexual. Don't matter if you got Gucci purses, little case, G's and half of the G's. I said, girl, <laughs> baby, <laughs> I wanna get sexual. <laughs> All the grown people in the house tonight. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, welcome back to Jerry, man. Oh, that shit might be jamming on the one. Oh, come on. Yeah. This is voted the number one black show. Amongst okay. black people Talk with them. two black parents. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't even my vote. The number one black show amongst black people with two black parents. <laughs> MG, what's happening, man? What's good? What's good? Yeah, hey, man. man, for those of you who don't know, today we talk, we got a very special guest in the house with us today. You see the shirt that he has on assets over liabilities. So, so like that style. leads me to believe know. that this is one of those guys that uh, knows about the EYL University yes, sir. and the great people over there and earn your leisure, yes, which sir. happens to be extended family and friends of ours. Absolutely. Big things in the making. Yes, MG, sir. the mortgage guy. Welcome to the trap. How you doing, fam? What's going on, fellas? What's happening? Appreciate What's the love. Happening? Appreciate y'all having well. me on. Right now, I just wanted to, to leave it open so you can give the people a brief introduction and a rundown of, you know, what it is you bring to the table. Ah, uh, man. So I bring a lot to the table, you know. Um, one of the members of Earn Your Leisure, Earn Your yes, Leisure. Sir. One of the co-founders of Earn Your Leisure University. Yes, sir. Co-founder. You were supposed Fest to be Fest. here the last time, the was, first time first they came. Time. Yep. Um, yep. I think something was going on in New York. I couldn't even find it. You were in New York. That's what I they said. I couldn't, I couldn't make it down here. But you know, co-founder. Hold on. What happened, Mario? That's speaking something wrong. What happened? See? Yeah. 
You sleep? Is it echo in this bitch, man? To here. Come on, man. Shit falling apart without you. A baby girl, baby, I wanna get sexual. I'm not doing this with you, man. Let's record this. All right, fuck it. <laughs> it's recorded now. Yeah. It's recorded. Let's just record a thousand hits. Yeah, that was fire. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was fire. Huh? We got one for sure. Yeah. J-O-N, what the fuck? What happened? Yeah, there we go right there. That's what we needed. You gotta put your foot up to the door to get yeah. in there. That's when? October the what? October the 16th. Facts. That's when we now. going. The Footprint okay. Center. The Ghetto Legends Tour. Arizona. The Ghetto Legends Tour. Y'all ready to go back to Phoenix? I'm ready to go back to Phoenix. They turned so up much, last time. You already know. Some bad bitches up there. That's, what, that's, that's that show where you said, you know, women coochie be sticking and they be acting like they don't smell it and fly skipped off the stage. Facts. That was Phoenix. <laughs> that was Phoenix. <laughs> so we gotta recreate another one. It's back. time to go back. Let's do it. Yes. Okay, bet. October 16th. All October the high 16th. Coaches. Come see your boys. Footprint Arena, Phoenix, Arizona. We yeah. live. Get on Legends Tour. Get your tickets. Yeah. Yeah. Hey man, welcome back to the 85 South Show. We just had a technical yeah. meltdown, and like I said, we got MG in here, man. Give me yeah. some more rundown. Of so look, uh, co-founder, Earn Your Leisure University, co-founder of InvestFest, mortgage professional for almost 20 years in the real estate finance business. Hey, congratulations on that. Yeah. It's a long time. It's a long time. Yeah, yeah. Definitely a long time. Help a lot of people um, buy real estate, whether you're buying a primary residence, investment property, you know, whatever it is, man. I just help a lot of folks out here. People that look like all of us in this room right now, right. you know, build wealth for real estate. And, you know, one, like I said, one of the members of Earn Your Legion, we just out here trying to do God's work, you know? Yeah, it's, uh, see, that's why you had to come through here, man. Yeah, I'm, like, I'm, it's I'm a lot honored. of people watching right now that have not purchase their first home, you know what I mean? Give them some, we're gonna jump right into it. Let's Give them it. some some uh, tips and shit that they can start working on right now that'll, that'll help them in the long run. All right, so let's first start with the mindset, right? I think everything, no matter what the fuck you're trying to do in life, it all starts here first. First of all. First and foremost, um, you can't be emotional when you're getting into real estate. You gotta treat this like a business because it is a business. Even if you're gonna go live in a house, you gotta make sure you have a CEO mentality, right? You can't be emotional. You can't go out here overpaying for cribs. You can't go out here being house rich and cash poor. A lot of people like to go out here and buy real estate and don't have a pot to piss in after they buy the real estate. Anything breaks, right? You need can't to have afford it. You can't afford it, right? It's gonna cost something. It's gonna cost something. Everything's gonna cost something at some point. These homes, and it's gonna be a lot. And it's gonna be a lot and it's gonna make you bankrupt on you. You're gonna be a foreclosure away. Right, so one of the first steps is understanding that, right? Because owning real estate, owning anything, any business, it comes with a certain level of responsibility. Maybe. You know what I'm saying? First and first and foremost, so you have to be mature to you know handle this. So that's one of the first things I try to tell people. Second thing is credit. Credit is very important. Hell, you can't even get good car insurance right now without having good credit. Right, so credit's the, car, a whole nother story. A whole nother, getting to anything right now is a whole nother story, but yeah. your credit gotta be right. Yeah, right? yeah, your credit ain't right. They treat you like you got a feeling. That, uh, worse, 
getting worse. <laughs> they you know come back. I got bad news. Man. <laughs> <laughs> they know your shit fucked up, but they come back and like, ah. <laughs> it could be good if you play baseball. It's the ERA. Who sent you? All they, they do this shit, they be like, you can't. Don't look at nothing on this lot. Go on that lot? You. My this house. lot and that lot way like the fuck <laughs> up the hill somewhere. Dude, Dude, buzzards you flying around that bitch. But, but that's, that's why your credit got to be right, man. And a lot of people don't. Look, people always ask me, what's the best way to repair your credit? I tell you, just pay your bills. Best way to repair your credit. Pay them folks. Pay your fucking Pay bills. Up. You know you, you took out the credit card. You, did. you know you fucking ran up the cell answer phone bill. Be an adult, be an adult. answer the phone. So that's still, when that's them still people calling you, you and you tell them with the that cards, you don't still, have Still it. pay your credit cards off with the credit yeah, back up. Look, it still, it's like it any, still works. Think, yeah. about, think about any credit in life, right? If you borrow $1,000, from him, if you don't pay him back, you think he gonna want to use some money? Your credit, your street credit is gone, because no. you don't pay back your money. No, no, he good. He right? good. He remind you. That's real. He yeah. remind you that he owes you some money. But it's the same thing when you, take, you when you deal with these corporations, right? You have to build a relationship with them so you can continue to get I money. And if you cannot pay, oh, I tell people to show all the time. If you can't pay a simple credit card, <laughs> phone bill, whatever it is, your your medical bill, what makes you think you can buy a house? Shit. What makes you think you can pay back the bank two, three, four, five hundred thousand? every single month because you, you don't have the history of paying somebody back. So the best credit repair is always pay your fucking bill. Um, yeah. You know, credit score wise, for, to buy a house, if you're a first time home buyer, you need as low as a 580 credit score right now to, mm. to buy a house. I don't recommend buying a house with a 580 credit score, then you're gonna get beat over the head with the interest rate, right? right? You're gonna have a month. Buy that month. You're, you're gonna pay quadruple. Forty eight percent interest. You're gonna have. Oh, that was interest, baby. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't even cracked you long. I'm eighty eight years old. <laughs> you owe six hundred thousand on an eighty thousand dollar house. <laughs> Basically, bro. Half, <laughs> half a million dollars. Tiny home. What's a good number? The good, good credit score number. Yeah. Look, I think anything above seven hundred is, is cool, but if you even as 660. I think that's a good starting place because you'll get a, a, a good interest rate. You won't get the best in the marketplace, but you're not going to get the 580 credit score, right? Okay. Now you're in a good position. Um, down payments, if you buy the first, your first house, you can use an FHA loan, right? You can do as little as 3.5% down with that. Um, there's programs out there, especially in Georgia. You got all these different um, home buying programs and stuff like that. We've been trying to talk to the state senate so we can get some programs for black men to get some houses. Absolutely. Why yeah. not? You guys. We, gotta, we don't get no kind of assistance. It's tough, man. It's tough, and you know the problem that I hate about any of these government type programs, when they put it out there, they make it almost un unattainable for people, right? They'll say you have to, you can't make more than thirty-five thousand a year, yeah. right, or forty thousand yeah. a year. It's like if you know, how you gonna be that? How you make your money? Yeah. It's for the working poor. They, that, you know that's, what that's what I read it too. They, yeah. How did how did you get this? How you able? Hey, Oh, well, you don't have a regular ink. We can't use this because, man, come the fuck on, yeah. man, because I'm not a regular person. So you got to do other shit for entertainers. You got to go drop way more down sometimes. Yeah, like, yeah. nah, they make you jump through hoops, yeah, especially if you're, you're talking about, yeah. if you're talking about government-funded programs, like that stuff is really for Yeah, the they kept asking me for money from when I was broke. I was like, look, don't worry about all that. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck them years. I didn't ask y'all for shit them years. <laughs> Fuck with me now. I wasn't trying to buy no house in 2013, baby. I was fucked up. <laughs> Why you want to know how fucked up I was? Oh, Don't they, be trying to count my cards. They, they asked you about your taxes in 2013. They got it made up. Man! Hey, hey. Everything that we did, we went right back out. What you talking about? What you need? Receipts? I was homeless with a house. <laughs> Look at my life, nigga. <laughs> I was homeless with a place to stay in the back in them times. What are you talking about? No, homeless with a house. You sound like I turned a couple. Uh, 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 I, I worked a couple summers. I stayed with my <laughs> Bitch, I was locked up. I was locked up to me. Y'all pay me, bitch. I know I was in jail. Oh, oh shit. You gotta make a feel shit. bad for your ass. You mean the year I lived outside? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, 2013. How could I forget oh. the year I spent under the stars? <laughs> <laughs> You wow. mean when I was just living recreationally? <laughs> yeah. oh, I was a nomad from 13 to 13. <laughs>
from 13 to 15, I went on a journey of self. Yeah. <laughs> I told you about when I was hitchhiking. <laughs> we out here like sunflower. We like like sunflower from Mars. I was trying to find my figure out who I was. Thanks for the journey of self. Yeah, I became a hobo. <laughs> I don't train to train. <laughs> Where we oh. are. <laughs> Not even gonna tell you about the time I spent as a lion trainer for the circus. Man, that was at least two oh, years. I, I, was, I knew I was. I, slept, I was sleeping in New York at Central Park. They were telling me about the Indians out there. There was some black Indians. I remember. But that was all I Man, I think that was in the early stages of dementia. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, shit. <laughs> the, the black Indians? Yeah, we don't start with that. We talked about the mortgage, bro. Keep going. Stage two. All right, so let's go ahead. Stage three. So, don't get involved with him, bro. That person. He fucked up as a person. <laughs> so, yo, you got three and a half percent down for FHA loan, right? You can do one, two family, three family, four family. So I always tell people to house hack, right? Especially if you um, don't have a lot of money, you're looking to be an investor, use these programs to your advantage. You can go buy a multifamily, bring in some rental income, and like you guys are talking about, like if you have, if you're self-employed, right? If you buy a multifamily, you can use that rental income from from that property to help you qualify also, right? But there's also programs for folks like yourself who are self-employed where you don't really have to put too much down. You're gonna have to do a minimum of 10% and you don't have to show no tax returns or nothing like that either. Um, that sound, that sound dangerous. Yeah. Nah, it's not dangerous. Because <laughs> you don't no, want no tax problems. Show no, them, show them. Nah, nah, don't nah, you right? Do. Even the years you spent outside. <laughs> <laughs> nah, they don't, they don't want to see your tax returns. They just want to see your bank statements. Yeah. They want to see the last 12 months of your bank statements to see your deposits going in, okay. right? So you see the money is coming in. We see what you're making. But look, you're business owners, so you're going to write off 90% of what you make, right? God, God bless the... Well, I don't, you know, I pay me. Man, sometimes, I mean, I'm a conglomerate. I invest in me. Yeah. I put it back. And so then it looked like I don't pay, I ain't got nothing. No, but that's but, but you but, but you're doing what you're supposed to do. Support, yeah. You, that's yeah. as a business owner, you're supposed to show less income so that way you pay less taxes. That's the right. that's the tax code is built for business owners and real estate investors. This is, this is in the code, right? This ain't no Okay. Nah, this I don't is want this. Oh, They're gonna be nah, watching this shit like trust we finally me. got him. <laughs> trust me. We don't want to so That's what he's been doing. He talks. This nigga tried to say he was a new man. <laughs> <laughs> Send the people to his house at once. <laughs> what do you mean, <laughs> recreational? <laughs> nah, we don't know what, no problems with them boys, right? Yeah. But. You can show those um, tax returns, I mean, not the tax returns, the bank statements, and we use that as your income to help you qualify. So there's so many different ways to get funding done. You just gotta be working with the right people yeah. that have all the programs and, and that can kind of tell you, all right, this is what you gotta do, and this is how you do it without getting yourself in no type of trouble. Right? When did you start seeing success in the real estate business? Oh shit, my story is crazy, man. Success is like this for me, bro. Right, yeah. this shit been up and down. I, I've been, like I said, 20 years. I got in this during the wild cowboy days, right in the subprime market. Like when you only you needed a pulse to get a loan, right? I was giving people three, four loans at a clip, like no problem. Wait, I'm scared of the shit you be saying. I'm trying to, I'm trying, I'm, I'm trying I just to don't want you, this bro. shit to come back. This is what the bank was doing. This, you this, know this, the way you this, said it, man. You sound like you know, I'm I'm not, giving not, a nigga huh? loans left and right. You, you were giving them loans. I'm me personally, no. I knew they couldn't pay for this shit. But the banks was doing it. Yeah, yeah. It was the sub. This is all documented. This bank, the one bank you worked for, still open. Nah, hell no. Oh, fuck okay. <laughs> this shit, man. Okay. I bet you went out of business. Wachovia before. <laughs> yeah, I was in Wachovia. I was in the name change Hey. I, I, I actually <laughs> won the lawsuit against them when I fell at work. I, they had to shut that whole shit. That's another but interview. But those were the wild cowboy days, though, right? When the market crashed, they, they put so much regulation in, that shit would never happen again. But success, like I said, was me. Right, this shit crazy that just, like, 11 old white dudes crashed the whole market last time by themselves and they just ran off with the money like, ah, oh, and they And they got, and they got to it. <laughs> oh, we got it again, Ernest. <laughs> Biggest shutdown in America. <laughs> Why you think I sold all my stuff? Hey, last one to go to jail is a rotten egg. <laughs> I'll die for it. We're talking, we're talking, we're talking early 2000s here, like. Nah, million, this was, this was like, off this, is like mid, off. this is like mid, this is like mid 2000s, right? Okay, this is, yeah, this is like 08, 2005. Yeah. Oh, six. I came in the, in the game like 03. Okay. So, right. you know, we had a nice run and then lost everything. Because, look, when I came into business, there was there was no internet. There was no 
Facebook. There was no Instagram. Right. There was none of the shit that we that we was what we're doing right yeah, now. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Y'all ain't know how many niggas had hummus. Bro, like it, it was so crazy back then. I got so many stories, but we ain't, we can talk about that off record. But it was so crazy back then what you could do compared to what you can do now. Yeah. Like it's just night and day. But when the market crashed, I lost everything. And it was just a matter of rebuilding myself because I didn't really know what was going lost on. Lost 92 bricks, had to crawl back. Basically. Basically, you know what I'm saying? Basically. Like nigga off his feet. Yeah. Oh, straight off my feet. I almost wanted to kill myself. We no, whoa, 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 whoa. Shit, oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. I'm, I'm telling you, my shit was down. I'm keeping it real with you. Like, it was down that bad? 100%. When talk you, when you, when you, shit, when you man, young and dumb and full of cum, real talk, yeah. and you come from where we all come from, you, no one teaches you how to manage money. Nobody teaches you anything. Our, our self-esteem is built off of materialistic items. Yes. So once you start making money and you get the materialistic items, your world is trapped into that, right? Now when you lose that shit and it's just like that, it's like, what the fuck? I'm a loser now, right? And there was none of this shit that we have. There was no 85 South to have a guy like me on. There was no EYL out there. There was no mentors in the community because there wasn't too many black folks that was doing real estate. And if they were doing real estate, they wasn't talking about it. Yeah, no. You know what I'm saying? It was keeping it to the fucking selves. So there was no one you could really go to and like, yo, I can't go to my pops. He don't know what the fuck is going on. Right? That so, should, that's gonna be our mission. We're gonna find some of them old black people who was doing real estate and keeping it a secret. But they, bringing them on. A lot of them, but, 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 it, but it was a lot of those people that were keeping it to themselves and not educating, right? Mm -hmm. So for me, when I went through that, my whole mind frame was like, yo, damn, I lost. You know what I mean? I just had two young kids at the time. So for me, it was a lot of pressure. But, you know, God is good and, you know, yeah. thank God he spared my life and yeah. I was able to get through that. And that's why I said the first thing you start with is your mindset, right? Because I had to sharpen my mind because my mind at that time wasn't sharp. I was actually mentally weak and I didn't even realize I was weak until the, the, that shit happened to me. Yeah. So building myself back up, it, was, it, was, it wasn't easy, but it was a great road and I'm happy for it because my mess became my message today. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Then it's, and I'm being God honest truth with y'all. Everything, oh, everything that I talk about online is basically my mistakes. I just don't frame it like that, but I'm telling people, I'm 43, I'll be 44 in August. So I'm an OG to me, yeah. right? And I'm trying to tell the people that's younger than me, like, yo, don't do this dumb shit. Don't commit fraud, don't do stupid shit. Like, it's not worth it. To, yeah. Don't be house rich and cash poor. Like, it don't make no sense. Don't matter if the bank gonna prove you, the niggas will foreclose on you at any given moment. You don't pay these people their money. So for me, I take on the responsibility because I know there was nobody <laughs> like me when I came in the game to kind of coach me, educate me, to show me the way. So now I feel like it's my responsibility. I feel like God brought me through all of that so now I can use my voice as a vessel for millions of people now who want to get into this mortgage or real estate business to help them execute at a very high level yeah. and sustain ownership, right? Because it's easy to get anything, right. right? You can make money today and that shit can be gone tomorrow, but how do you keep the money for a long term? And that's one thing I didn't realize. I didn't know how to do it. No one taught me it. Nigga, I'm going to the club. I'm having a good time. I'm buying Beamers. I'm it's living my life. Yeah. Nigga, I'm fly as hell. Right. <laughs> like, I'm doing what, what do we idolize when we grow up? Ball players and drug dealers. So I want to look like a ball player and a drug dealer. Yeah. Real talk. So I wanted to look like a ball player that looked like a drug dealer. <laughs> <laughs> Facts though, right? But that's yeah. how we all kind of grew up. So for me, yeah, we my drug dealers make that shit look good. You yeah. don't never see them selling drugs. You nah, only they get just to look, see they look smooth as hell, fly cars, fly women yeah. in the clubs. But then you start seeing who really right got the world money. money. Whatever, you know, when that's <laughs> what I started wanting to be. I started wanting to dress like them. Well, you know, who? like the rich. You know, Rich Porter's the, stuff? The, the billionaire tree. You know, like, I want to dress like I'm going duck hunting every day. Like, do you know what I'm saying? We the spend too yeah. much time on this shit, bro. Motherfuckers who got money just wake up, put clothes on. Don't give a fuck. Yeah, nah, they Shirt, don't, pants, doesn't shoes. Matter. Like, whatever, it could be, be the same uniform every day. It don't Man, matter. What? You need those patches on your jacket. Oh, like, yeah, I know what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, they don't give a fuck. You need, you need that little shit. So what, when I found success is honestly when I lost everything to be honest with you, because that made me kind of hunker down and say, all right, let me get this shit right first. What was the process? How did you, like, I know the whole shit was emotional and shit, but like, the comeback. What'd you start doing to bounce back? I stopped treating people like a number and started treating them like people. Karma has no expiration date. So you gotta understand, when I came into business, I was trained by Wall Street guys. 
right? So the same guys we were talking about before who fucked up the market. I was trained by those type of dudes. Let's them I'm talking. You talking? You talking? Talk, 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 you talk, you talk, you talk, you see them movies like Ballroom and yeah. shit like that? Yeah. Like when I first came into business, I was working in shops where it was like you're on the phone all day, smiling and dollars, they smiling taste, and yeah, dollars, yeah, right? Yeah. Everybody's a everybody's a number. Everybody's a dollar sign. You're yes. not a person. Yes. How much money can I make off of you today? Right. Mm-hmm. People come to my office, I'm thinking, can I make three or four points off this person? I don't care who you look like. Like it's a call center. Nigga, it could be your mama. It don't matter. I'm going to make four points off of her because that's just what I was right. trained. Right. I was trained to be an assassin, right? And I'm a firm believer karma has no expiration date, and that's why I lost everything because I wasn't treating people like people. So the first step mm-hmm. was stop treating people like numbers. Treat them like fucking human beings. Right. No Actually, start deepening relationships with them. Fill out, find out what's their needs. Right. Right. Try to really help them because I feel as if when I came into business, I wasn't trying to help. I was just trying to make money. I was trying to sell, you know. And that was the first step, bro. Was just like, how can I really help you? Yeah. Tell me a story. Yeah. All right. This is, I think, the program that'll be right for you. Me, yeah. honestly, telling you the truth, like, bro, you can't afford this. Yeah. Why are you buying this? Right, and I would lose deals left and right because there's gonna be a bank around the corner or a broker around the corner that's gonna do that deal. But I felt good going home at night, being yes. able to sleep, knowing that, yo, I'm not putting somebody in something they can't afford because not only did I, I know a lot of people that foreclose, I foreclose on my properties as well, and some of my clients foreclose. That shit is nothing you wanna go through in life, especially when you have a family and everything like that. So going through that process made me more sympathetic to people's needs because I was a person also who was living great but I was also a victim of the bullshit too because I wasn't educated enough. So if I'm gonna be in this business, first thing I gotta treat people like people. Second thing is I gotta know the business. I gotta become a guideline goat. I gotta know everything that I need to know about how to get these deals closed, how the banks work, how the Wall Street shit work. So then I just started studying the market. And one of the best things I ever did was get a, a job at JP Morgan Chase. I tell people all the time, me going to work for J.P. Morgan Chase as a loan officer was like me getting my MBA in real estate finance. Because there they taught me systems, they taught me time management, they taught me how to deepen a relationship with the customers. I was working on Wall Street for two years doing loans for a lot of hedge fund people. That's where I learned generational wealth, that's where I learned trust, that's where I learned... Real apprenticeship. No, that, that was fucking like going through your PhD. Because now you got these folks who've got companies on type of shell companies and they got millions of dollars it's like but your personal returns have nothing i'm like how the hell you got all this money in right. your company but you your, your shit look like nothing right. then i started learning the game and i started really learning like yo how these motherfuckers is really doing this and i'm like yo we playing the game all wrong and, and where we come from we don't know nothing like these folks and so that, right. that four years that i spent there really taught me strategies. It really taught me how the 1% really start thinking. Yeah. And then I just started taking that information and giving it to the people that look like me, yeah, who, yeah. who would listen, who wanted to buy homes. And that's when I started telling people, yo, you gotta buy multifamilies. You gotta, if you wanna be a landlord, you wanna create more income and passive income, buy multifamilies, especially in New York, there's multifamilies everywhere. So buy, forget buying a single family home because <clears throat> the American dream is flawed. American dream is go buy, the single family, white picket fence, the backyard, barbecues and bar mitzvahs. But while the landlords and the investors are buying up the multifamilies and all of us are living in it. So then I started telling my people like, yo, now nah, we gotta get multifamilies, we gotta do this. And that's when I started investing myself, really getting serious about investing and teaching my people how to invest and my clients most importantly. And then it just started taking off from there. And now we're here. You know, now I'm on 85 South. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now we now 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 we here. So like the, the game for me is just again teaching our people. Give the young black people some money game right quick. The money game is look. Don't be house rich and cash poor, first and foremost, don't right? Do don't bite off more than you can chew. Sometimes niggas' eyes is bigger than their stomach. Mm-hmm. Right? So don't bite off more than you can chew. If you wanna be a landlord, figure out the programs that work best for you to be a landlord, right. if you want to be an investor. And if you don't want to be a landlord, if you don't want to be an investor, don't try to keep up with the Joneses. Don't let the internet... Hold on, his name Chris Jones. Don't. Don't try to keep up with this. <laughs> 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 don't, 
<laughs> right? No, but, no offense to the Joneses in no, the room. No offense. No There's a few Joneses in here. I, I'm sorry. Right? Look at my mama hug. I'm not a different man. Go ahead. But, you know, stay in your lane, man. Like, if you don't want to be uh, an investor, like, we on the internet now, so everybody, like, yo, you got to do this, you got to do that. Nah, do what's best for you, man. Right, right. Like, not everybody want to deal with tennis. Not everybody want to flip a house. Not everybody want to do Airbnb. Right. It's okay to go just buy a house you want to live in and be comfortable with your family right. and your friends. Stop right? comparing your life to other Stop people's shit. Stop comparing your shit to them, and don't let the internet get you into foreclosure, man. Because these fools out here on the internet will tell you everything under the blue sun, but they're not the one responsible for that mortgage. Hey, what we doing? Thursday. Uh, where we going? October 20th. October 20th? Minneapolis, Minnesota. We going back. We, we in Minnesota. Back. Don't we don't say Minnesota. shit like that. We you in Minnesota. We might have to do the continuation of what happened at the mama whooped our ass that, that we whooped your ass. We done, got got a, we done got a little older. We done got a little older. Yeah. Now we got to bring okay. it back. We're trying to get on that. You excited about Minneapolis? Local? I can't wait to get up there. They were crazy last time. They, they remember. Yeah, That's yeah. when you said that nigga looked like he was still evolving in the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh shit, I was about to say November. October 20th. Sure did. Hey, Minneapolis, Minnesota. <laughs> at the Armory, just the Armory? It's not called nothing else? No, it's just the Armory. Just the Armory. Just the Armory. All right, but well, we're going to be at Just the Armory. That's it? October not 20th. Not Just the Armory, Just the Armory. The Armory, motherfucker. October 20th. What they <laughs> say? Get your ticket. Hello, everybody. My name is Carlos Miller, and I just came to spread a little black love because I hope you're having a good day because this is a good day scent. That's black love. Since I love you so much, I want to give you my discount code, my personal discount code, and go and get 25% off. L-O-U-S. Kind of look like love if you write it fast. But if you use my code, you'll get an additional 25% off if you go to the Good Day Sense website and buy you some of these dope-ass candles. Man, that shit really do smell like black love, though. Like, after black people been holding hands with some cocoa butter on. That's love. Use my personal discount code so you can get you some of these nice-ass candles. And have a good day with a good day scent. 25% off. L-O-U-S. Black love. One of my favorites, because I love you. And you're black. Even if you're not black, the code still works. That's the beautiful part about it. It's crazy. I'll see you next time. And three months later, that YouTube video come out. <laughs> Done. Dan's going to jail. Right. They scamming and everything. They broke his head. So, so the game is oh, just... you remember your boy? <laughs> Whatever happened to? <laughs> <laughs> so the game is, man, just video stay in your lane. That's the best game I could give everybody because this shit is not rocket science at the end of right. the day. There's no magic trick that I can tell you about anything in real estate. I'm just trying to... I put it in a term and phrases that our people can understand because I'm not trying to talk over you. I'm trying to talk to you. I want you to be able to retain the information. Right. But most importantly, just stay in your lane, bro. Like, you don't have to do what everybody want to do, but now don't contradict yourself, too. If you're saying you want to be an investor, you want to be a landlord, why are you buying a condo? Why are you buying a single family? Especially if you know you ain't got no money, and that first deal is going to take all your bread. Why are you going out there to buy that single family or something like that? Go get that, go, go get that multifamily. Go get it, because there's nothing wrong with it. Get it create that income, get that experience, and then in a year you can move out. That's your rental property. Now you can go repeat the process and keep building your, your portfolio. So just stay in your lane, man, and, and just really figure out exactly what you want to do and then go for it. Balls to the wall, man. Hell yeah. Well, MG, MG did, did you ever hear about down here, about the, uh, you can only have like one or two Airbnbs? Did you ever hear that? Hear that? Yeah, but, 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 but that's just a, nah, that's just in Georgia, but that's not in the fact right now. I know people out here killing Airbnb still. Okay, all right. Like it's it's gonna I'm be hard. To Look, it's hard for them to try to regulate that because it's always gonna find a way to right. figure figure it out, right? Yeah. And right now, the city of Atlanta, they push or Georgia, I should say, they push those regulations back into September. Okay. But from all my folks out here that are killing it in Airbnb, they're not worried about it at all because no, they're gonna they're just already up. they're already up and they're gonna figure out a way. They're but, gonna buy them houses and become the owner of the yeah, business. Exactly. See, and that's the thing, right? Let out. We have to, business. in our communities, we have to stop looking for the shortcuts, right? <laughs> so Airbnb arbitrage is a good thing. You don't have to own the place, right? You can put in a corporate lease and do that thing, and you can make your money. But the rules change like that, and if you ain't an owner, that just shows you. Ownership is where it's at. Yes. Because now you, 
you giving the landlord or whoever owns that property, now you, you're you creating that income and now they're seeing what you're doing. If those laws do change, they could kick you out and just keep the thing going. Yeah. And now they're making the money. So you need to own whatever you're doing. So that's why I'm a big, I'm an ownership advocate. And that's why for me, it doesn't matter if you own multifamilies or single families, just figure it the hell out. But another good thing that's in Georgia, what I love is you can do ADUs. Y'all heard of ADUs before? Accessory dwelling units. So you see how these cribs now, single families, people like, turn a garage into another apartment, that's an ADU, right? That's legal in Georgia, where you can build, you can buy a single family home, say you have an acre of land or a half an acre, you can turn that garage into a whole apartment. Yeah. It has to be under like a thousand square feet, I believe. And that's why the tiny home shit booming so We got hard. a tiny home being built right now. Right? Oh, and the time. It's taking you so long. It's tiny. 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 It's there you go. He you know Booker. Booker? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know him too. You know Booker too? Yeah. There you have it. He's can the plug. You, can you put the tiny homes on your own lot though? On yeah. your own that's property? Yeah, yeah. 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 He said that's a community. Fit right? Nah, them shits cost like 200 bands. Yeah, damn. That's they what? Like they cost like 200K. Nah, not these ones we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were talking about the Nah, the ones we're talking about. The ones we talking about, they just a little step above them Home Depot ones. Oh, you talking about the little shits? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The little shits? You talking about a fucking, uh, a fucking house. A tiny house. No. Those shits is like 700 square feet. You got me fucked up. <laughs> what you trying to get a shot? No. How many bed? One bedroom? I'm just no, it's a, ba- it's a bathroom and a half, I believe, and it's like two bedrooms. Bathroom it's like 700 bedroom. square feet. Like them shits, square feet. Yeah, them shits is not bad. Yeah, like, you, yeah they, everything's they, supposed to be super saying. efficient, right? Oh, yeah, it's, it's affordable, right? Yeah. America has an affordability crisis right now, so how do you solve it? Every house, look at, look at look at fucking Georgia. Look at the prices out here. The prices out here is crazy. Average price in Georgia, I think, is 535,000 right now. Yeah, yeah. Right, That's three crazy. years ago, four years ago, it was probably 200. Four months ago. Right? Yeah. Like, it's going crazy. So how do you how do you solve it? You gotta, you gotta get creative, right? You gotta build affordable housing, and it costs less to build these type of homes, and people can afford a $200,000 mortgage. That's gonna give you probably a payment around 1000 or $1,200 a year. That's the equivalent of, of an apartment. It's probably cheaper than an apartment. So you gotta look at the affordability. So a lot of builders are now getting creative to kind of solve that problem. It's a smart play that anybody who's watching this, anybody in this room can do the same thing. I just want everybody who's watching this to know that buying shit like this is a process. Oh, 100%. I think a lot of people get frustrated with the process though, because mm-hmm. it, it is not like actually buying shit. It takes about 30 days to actually buy some shit. Absolutely. <laughs> At least. Go that's the fast. Yeah, and that's, and that's <laughs> it's fast. It's some work. Yeah. Nah, it's expectations, man. I think people
you gotta understand they're gonna ask you for your blood type, your DNA, all the paperwork, maybe your first bond. They're gonna want everything they need to know to make sure that you can pay them back. And you have to set your expectations properly and go through that process. And that's why it's important to be organized too. You gotta set yourself up so the money can flow through you. See, that's what you gotta do. So you gotta make a place for the money to live. If you want the money to come in abundance, you gotta have a nice extra bedroom so that money can live with you. See, 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 see money don't like having roommates. See, see money like to be comfortable. You know what I'm saying? See, money like to have its own little spot where money can just be around you sometimes. You know, money like privacy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That? Money, money like money, 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 money. money. Money can't stay in a tiny home? No, money, money need a whole house. You see, you know what I'm a saying? Big house. See, money need a big house. You need a tiny home so you can live in a big house. You know what I'm saying? That? See, <laughs> that's what I've been trying to tell him about my whole seminar. Listen, <laughs> listen what to this. Hey, my seminar. I got a seminar I've been selling online. I've been trying to tell these black people how to get this real estate money together. Listen, what you want to do is, see, oh. you want to buy a whole, you, 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 want, you, 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 you want multiple people paying rent at, 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 at one time. That's how you make your money. See, you, you get 1100 a month over here, you get 1300 a month over here, so what's that? 2400 a month, that's on the same street. That's on the same street. That's on the same street. You ain't even got to move off the same street. You just do it all right there together. Multi-family, then you pay your other bills until you live low. You live low till you get high. That's how you get money in America. You understand that? You got to, you got to live low till you get high. You understand that? You got to make sure, you got to act like you ain't got a motherfucking thing. Look at me, look at me. You understand that? Listen. You out here going and I can eat every day. Some days you just got to act like you ain't got shit, baby. <laughs> All day. Day. See, motherfuckers, they snacking their way out the game. That's what they fucking up at. You buy some gas, then you buy $20, $30 worth of snacks. Chips. Get you something to drink, some peanuts or something, some chips. Sit your motherfucking ass down. You're going home. Oh, Two my... peanuts is a dollar. Then you fat motherfuckers stop and get something to eat after that. You got snacks at the gas station and stop and win. Right across the street with the window. I don't understand this shit. Uh, uh, <laughs> think about the last time you ate eight. Think about the last time you ate eight, nigga. Can't remember. See, don't see, eat. That's part of my <laughs> shit. Day, nigga. See, listen, don't eat. Motherfucker get hungry. That's when you start making irrational decisions. <laughs> just like the Snitter commercial said. Talk to him. You, you not, not yourself. yourself when you hungry. <laughs> you, <laughs> you turn to a whole nother motherfucker who think that you financially. <laughs> Independent. Do you remember when you was eating them noodles and you was thankful for them? You done forgot all about noodles. Now you got a few dollars. You don't even like noodles no more. That's in the seminar too. All the time. All you go. Right? The whole chapter on noodles. <laughs> Noodle chapter. Whole chapter on just financial nutrition. So you eat That's the noodles? name of the book I'm coming out with called Financial Nutrition. Because I'm telling you, my theory is, so, as soon as the motherfucker get hungry, you turn to somebody else. They don't know your financial situation. <laughs> then once you come off that financial, like, hunger high, mm -hmm. after you done ate and all that, you feel bad. You be like, God damn, I could have ate that sandwich. I spent $38 <laughs> on Uber Eats. <laughs> <laughs> and guess what? You still had to eat that motherfucking sandwich. It's great. Now you ain't got shit to eat tomorrow. Oh, man. That's in the seminar. Financial health. Financial nutrition. Financial nutrition. Right, for the hungry broke, uh, broke people. That's what, I might leave that bottom part off. I'm, I'm going back and forth with my pump shit. <laughs> now, where they can find you at on social media and all that good pimp shit? Aw, uh, man. Catch me at MG The Mortgage Guy. Um, but this, why are you stealing my blunts? What are you talking about? I got a, he's he stealing my blunts and everything. This, this, this ain't this is a promotional blunt. <laughs> a promotional blunt. It ain't blunt. even a recreational blunt. It's for the show. Yeah, this is a promo it's blunt. It's a blunt. <laughs> right? That's like when they bring you the dessert cart. Hold on. You don't eat yeah. this blunt on the cart. Yeah. That shit made out of salt. Can we get a live blunt? <laughs> we need a live blunt. <laughs> he's trying to smoke the promotional food. <laughs> <laughs> Them people paying me good money to use that shit. <laughs> I'm about to I smoked another prop. Hello, <laughs> bro. It's like we're shooting a commercial. We're not really eating this food. <laughs> Can we get a live blunt? <laughs> yo, y'all are crazy, yo. Yo, y'all do this shit all day long. Man, no, bro. Right. 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 Yeah. So and you know what we create? Mm -hmm. We're creating media real estate with this show. See, we're going to occupy a space. We're creating a neighborhood mm -hmm. online of of black culture, and we bring in people like you who are like, who, who do shit in the world. Mm -hmm. And then, you know what I'm saying, we bring them over here so the people who watch this show, I know the fuck with you. 
to like they'll notify you on social media, hit Absolutely. you with all their questions, right? Because we got a whole bunch of people who are doing a whole bunch of shit right now. So a lot of college students who watch this, who are doing the real estate shit. There's a few people out there who are out there, you know, actually in the field, like, I need to hit them and ask them. Like you said, ain't no mentors, ain't no ain't no people who look like us in these fields. Absolutely. So it's like they know that we crazy as hell and we comedians and we say a lot of good shit, but they can't like don't know if it's real because we comedians and they ain't live the life that we live. But then they can hit you because you're more serious and they'll be like, man, for real, you can help me get up. <laughs> so, when, that's, that's exactly how they're going to be. Like, exactly like, how so just too. know after this shit come out, it's going to be it's some people that hit you to be like, man, on some real shit. Look. Like they don't know that you're already real. Look, hit me look, up, Cat man. got a question. Let's go. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that. So it's all November 12th. What? Chicago, Illinois. What? Come shot on, man. Town. Going back to the shot Come on, man. We going to the shot town. We going to be at the Wind Trust Arena. And I trust that the wind will be there November 12th because it's going to be back November in Chicago. Girl. Chicago, man. I'm going to get there back. early. It'd be hard as hell to get into them Chicago mm -hmm. theaters. No cap. Yeah, 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 you gotta park at the other theater to get into one theater. But yeah, hey, man. make sure you there November 12th. What? Get Return of the Ghetto Legends Tour live in Chicago, y'all. Been we saying we gotta come back to man. Chicago playing, man. for the longest. We coming back on phone. When y'all coming back to Chicago? On phone. And then back. Hey, 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 hey. Don't say nothing they say up there. We don't know what that's. So I mean, we don't? No. We didn't say it. Don't, don't say it no more. All right, well. All right, November 12th, we're going to figure out what we can and can't say in Chicago at the Wind Trust Arena. Yes. It's a lot of shit. Don't we probably him. can't wear all these bright ass colors. Nah, you just can't we wear your hat. Yeah, you can't wear your hat to a certain degree. Well, I wear my shit to the front. I'm So you. Hey, what's up? It's your man Carlos Miller. Sunday, November the 5th, we will be at the Neil Blaisdell Arena in Honolulu, Hawaii. Me, DJ d Rick, Esther Koo, DC Young Fly, and Rip Michaels. Make sure you grab those tickets. Hey, what's up, man? I didn't know you were right there, man. It's your boy, Jack Thriller, a.k.a. Uh, Luke Eyewalker, a.k.a. The Visionary. It's going down in a major way, man. That's right. I'm finally here. 85 South, 85 South, 85 South. We're talking about my new show, New Jack Thriller City, man. I got some of all my famous friends coming through from Music Soul Child, RL, Drew Hill, Delicious. Um, it is we're down in a major way, man, and I need you to tune in. Not now, but right now to Channel 85. Make sure you subscribe to New Jack Thriller City on YouTube. New Jack Thriller City on YouTube. I'm telling you, it's gonna be crazy, entertaining from one to done. I'm even giving out relationship advice. So if you need relationship advice, man, make sure you DM me at Jack Thriller. New Jack Thriller City. New Jack Thriller City, live on Channel 85. Hey, do I have something in mind? Y'all go to commercial. Don't kiss them hoes in the mouth unless you got to. Let's go. About your debt to income ratio. So I don't like to go off of, I don't like to go off of like that number that you just said. Everything in the mortgage world is DTI, debt to income ratio. So it's all on what your monthly um, payments are. Right. On your credit report, so if you got car loans, student loans, um, credit cards, we're looking at that, and then we're looking at your income, right? But we're looking at the gross income, and what I'd like to tell people all the time, your gross is not your net. Right. You're not taking home your gross. So if you got $2,000 a month in monthly payments, but you make $4,000 a month gross, the bank might still approve you because that's a 50% debt to income ratio right there. But you gotta really understand, you're more like a 75, 80% debt to income ratio because you probably only bring home 3,000 right. out of that four and your bills is, is two and you still gotta pay for the maintenance, your cell phone yeah, bill, your cable bill. You gotta put weed. gas, you yeah. gotta get some bud, you, you need to get some, you need to get some backwards. Some them shit. You know what I mean? Backwards <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> expensive as fuck right about now. nine dollars. Nine dollars a pack is serious, Woo, you right? You can give some more weed. That's what I expect. <laughs> God damn! Man, but it's, a, but it's, already but it's a fact. But it's all on your debt to income ratio, right? And that's really what we're looking at. So you want to make sure that your debt is low, especially right now we're in this recession. Um, you want to make sure that you're not overextending yourself on bullshit, especially if you're trying to buy real estate because you don't know what's going to happen in this in this economy. How do you add to your income? 
I mean, you just gotta get money. You gotta hustle. That's the simplest right, shit. Right, it's the simplest. Right there, book. Have it in the right there, book. Have have Don't pass that up. What? That's what's the, the, what's the, the, the name what's of the your book. What's the title? <laughs> yeah, get that money. Get that money. <laughs> you gotta hustle. You gotta hustle. No book tooks. <laughs> no took. No book. But you gotta hustle, man. There's multiple streams. Look, one stream of income is too close to being broke. Yep. I'm a, I'm a firm believer in that. Yeah. So, and I think that's what fucked me over back in the day is I was only solely dependent on this mortgage business. Right. And when everything crashed, I didn't know, have no options. I had debt, but no income coming in. Mm. So if you want to add to your income, yo, we in the information and technology era. We just talked about Uber Eats. Like, think about it. You can go on Uber Eats and you can run up a bag. I know people making 100K a year just by doing Uber Eats all day long. And you ain't even got to talk to nobody. You ain't got to talk to nobody. You just got to drive your fucking car and go pick up some shit and bring it to somebody that you're never going to see. Leave it at the doorbell or in the doorstep and just keep it moving. And, and, you, keep, and you keep shit. it pushing. Once all them fees <laughs> come in, bro. But think about it. Because somebody yeah. got to get paid to give you your shit. So, They're really charging like you going up in there, bitch, eating. It's the same as going in there and sitting down. You're better off going in and sitting down or yeah, going to get it yourself, but it's another hustle. It's so many hustles nowadays you that get you your can ass do. up. Yo, our people are just fucking lazy. Everybody's Don't say that. They're going to believe it. No, it's true, though. It's, <laughs> and that's true. Let's keep it real, right? A lot of our people are just lazy. lazy. Go ahead, go ahead. No, no, no. A lot of our people are lazy. A lot of our people have a sense of entitlement, right? They feel like shit is supposed to come to them. Like, even my own kids sometimes, like, and it's our fault because we spoil them to a certain extent, yeah. right? But even my son, I have to tell him sometimes, like, yo, bro, you don't have shit. You broke. <laughs> you, you're broke. Yeah, and my, my, my guy, Tooks, is laughing. He's been with me for five years. He knows. Right. Like, that's how I talk to my kids. Like, you're a broke, broke best friend. You're a broke roommate. Yeah. Like, I, I have money. You don't. Yeah. Trying to, sometimes I make my son believe that, too. No. Some days we just bro we just poor. We just poor. Yeah. About one day a week. Yeah. I try to do this too. We ain't got it. No, we don't. We fucked up today. I told we we fucked up. I, told yeah, I need him to know that money comes in a cycle. I need him to know that some days we fucked up. Yeah, but because you, you can't. Even if we not, I want to create. It's the, it's the mentality, it's though. The <laughs> it, it's the urgency, too. And that's what I try to tell my kids or even anybody I'm speaking to. Like, yo, you got to want it, man. Because yeah. ain't nothing going to be given to you in this life. They, they, only thing we, we promise is to live and die. Right. Death and taxes. The only things taxes. That, that's the only thing that's guaranteed. Dude, so any time. way we live in, this is a luxury. Yeah. And every day we wake up is a blessing. Right? So we can't yeah. take a we can't take it for granted. So I try to tell my kids, my clients, anybody who will listen, yo, if you want to make more money, what the fuck are you doing? Everybody in this room got intellectual property. Everybody in here can be making doing something and making money. You got mad- Get busy! You got so many creators in here. Everybody in here could be making a form of income just by because they work at 85 South. Yep. Think about it. Everybody in here could get another bag. You just gotta be creative, not fuck up the, the, the real bag. By, you gotta come to work, you gotta do what you gotta do. Who the fuck laughed when he said the real Somebody bag? <laughs> Somebody did, I ain't gonna hold you up. Know? Yeah. Somebody did. This ain't it. But you, gotta, you gotta stick to your- <laughs> put, the, put that two week notice in. Somebody about to quit. Somebody about to quit. I don't know who it is. Look at Marvin. Marvin, Marvin, Marvin. It's Marvin. Marvin, who ever did that? Bitch, I'm the way, though. I know I wasn't the only one. Somebody about to quit. But it's real talk, though, man. Like, that nigga you got stories and everything. Oh. Hey, TMZ. <laughs> I got the real reason that nigga left. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, oh, you want to know about the in-house thermal? That's what? <laughs> There's so much shit you can do, man, to, to get money. So to answer your question is, how do you add to your income? Yo, figure that shit out, man. Like, think deeper. To what, like, I had a lady on my live the other day. I can't remember her name. I was shout out. But she was telling me that she's a lawyer. Yeah. And she was telling me her mother had Alzheimer's. And she um, had to step back from practicing law because she had to be a caregiver for her mother for the past three to four years. And she was thinking about what could she do next. And I'm like, you've been a caregiver for three to four years, right? I yeah. said, you got a book, you got a digital course, you got hey, a, you, you got an ebook, uh, but you a whole ass lawyer too. But on top of that, forget the lawyer shit. You know how I many people, parents are suffering with. Alzheimer's time, yeah. and dementia and, and all need these to sue things. the fuck out these elderly homes. Not just sue the <laughs> fuck out of them, but understand how do you go through that process? Right. What are the steps that you are taking to get your like, your mother life together, yeah. life together? Because she was talking about how it was rough, but now her mother is kind of stable and everything like that. I'm like, yo, you got a whole book. Right. 
that you can write on that process because there's millions of people that go through that. And she was like, yo, I never thought about that. I'm like, right. but that's what I'm saying. Like, we all have that intellectual property that we can tap into our inner self to create more revenue, streams of revenue because you can't just have one. That would be my dream job. Just have me a little office with one desk. People just come in there and be like, how can I get money? And just tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Carlos Miller consultant. Right? One, one little bit of room. Lost consultant. Lost consultant. Nigga, I ain't waiting on your motherfucking ass coming here, nigga. Look, I see you shoot them dice. <laughs> Bitch, hey, you on the face. Get hey, the ticket, Jay. Hey, Lowe's always look out the door to make sure no, nobody's No, my back turn when you get in there. <laughs> my back turn. <laughs> you gonna turn around like that dude that's putting again. Like, man. You gonna turn around like that. Dr. Claw. Gotcha. I'm gonna say something right now that I know you don't want to hear. <laughs> you gotta bring your finger out. <laughs> Quit your job right now. <laughs> what? Quit your fucking job. It's costing you money. It's costing you <laughs> 70k a year to work there. <laughs> nah, that should be hard though. Nah, that definitely be hard. Drop your social media shit again so they can follow. So, uh, MG the Mortgage Guy, YouTube, Instagram. Also check me out on um, Earn Your Leisure. Um, EYL Network, Rants and Gems Podcast, number one real estate podcast in the black and brown community. Um, just, so, yeah. just so you know. Um, yeah. Invest Fest. Let's talk about Invest Fest. Invest Fest. Yeah. Invest Fest, the biggest on, ever, man. man. Shout this, out to Troy, Rashad, thing, Mike, like the, whole, the whole team, man. Like, I love that. Invest Fest, man. It's the financial literacy, um, the Coachella of financial literacy. You know, this is um, edutainment at its finest. And this weekend in Atlanta, we're gonna turn up, man. We got over 10,000 people. I think we got close to 11,000 people. Let's go, let's go, let's go. It's um, August 5th, 6th, and 7th at the Georgia World Conference Center. Tickets are sold out now, unfortunately, but you can get the live stream by going to earnyourleisure.com, right? Get the live stream, it's like pay-per-view. What happened? No, nah, we, nah, we already up. discussed it. Okay, you oh, fucked up by a promo. Everybody stand down. Let's restart. Take it from the top. Now tell me about the best. Come on. Motherfuckers gonna show up late. Trying to navigate shit. And you had a video. I believe that's who laughed when you said don't fuck the band. I think that was the one who said We've exposed them all. We have been a thorn in my ass since I did it. Fuck it, we'll do it live! <laughs> we'll do it live! <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> now you're the fucked up by earn your leisure advertising money. <laughs> <laughs> he got down, this is the slot he paid for. <laughs> Take it from the top, we'll shoot it live. MG, tell us about Invest Fest that's coming up real soon. Let's talk about Invest Fest. Go to earnyleisure.com. It's the coach. Coachella of financial literacy. Um, we got Tyler Perry. We got Steve Harvey. Yes. I mean, yes. we got Dan yes. Kathleen. Yes. Dan Kathleen, chairman of uh, Chick-fil-A. We got Don Peoples, billionaire real estate developer. Yes. We got Charlemagne the God. Yes. I mean, we got Wall Street Trapper, Ian, the master investor. We got Ernie Leisure. We got me. We got Keanu Watson. I mean, we got- I thought you were about to say Keanu Reeves. I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga, Trey the Truth had the Ninja Turtles at Trey Day. Anything is possible. <laughs> they got the they they had all the original Donatello, Ninja Turtles. Like Donatello, like Angel, like at Trey Day. Man, yeah. them niggas were like, hey, hey, bro, that <laughs> pulled up. Mmm. For the kid. Fool him. All right, man. Oh, oh shit. All right, y'all go in. Oh, oh, that's him, oh. man. But nah. <laughs> Look, <laughs> InvestFest, go to investfest.com. Tickets are sold out right now, but you can get the live stream. Um, it's going to be amazing, man. So you definitely don't want to miss that. Okay. You got to think about this, though. This is history in the making, right? You got almost 11,000 black and brown people coming out for financial literacy. Right. We got over three. It's going to be at least 200 white people there. We welcome them. I know it. We want them. They're coming anyway. Well, they're definitely coming. Anytime we know, do shout, they want to be Shout out to our sponsors, J.P. Morgan Chase and everybody really? Meta, BT. You know, yeah. shout out to all of our sponsors for it, man. This is, um, shout out to our partner, Steve Harvey. This um, to, to I mean, this but, is for everybody. Shout out to yeah, yeah, EBT, too. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of like for us, by us, right? When you really think about it, it's full boo, right? So we got him to come. 
Yeah. So, so calm. Yeah. So calm. But as far as boss, man, you gotta think about it. It's four black partners, you know, me, Troy, Rashad, um, and, and Mike, you know, we thought about this last year. And last year we had 4,000, 4,200 people somewhere around there and 180 business vendors. Yeah. And we did that in two weeks of planning, six weeks of promo. And this year we almost 11,000 tickets sold. And 300, yeah, yeah. 300 business vendors. Oh, yeah. We got three. That, that three. Wasn't the live that's not even the. No, that's tickets sold. That's how many people are going to be at the Georgia World Conference Center. Oh yeah. my God. Like. I'm that ain't even counting the niggas that's just gonna walk right in. Oh, they gonna pay too. Yeah. <laughs> you know you walk okay. in. Hey, you walk in. You walk in. You You walk in. You walk in. You walk in. You walk in. Be prepared to pay at the door. Right. Because it's a lot of security. You know what I mean? And we're gonna make sure you can't just be walking up in there. But we welcome you. We want everybody to come and learn. Like I said. It's, ed it's educated. <laughs> hey, Dad told me. He said, he said, fuck that live stream. Just show up. <laughs> Break the credit card. Go get MG. Fuck with that live stream. Go get MG. Tell us more, guy. He said the old nigga. Bro, watch out. Hey, watch out. Be back. Ken already in there. Hold on, Lord. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Hold on. I'm finna come get you. Hold on. You see that nigga look at the phone and not answer. Oh, no, yeah, but Cat, I can see you. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Lex T. And it's your girl, Dre and Nicole. And I got some really good news for y'all. Yes, period, y'all. We are about to revamp our whole Patreon. Yes. We got so much new shit coming soon for y'all. Like, we about to be doing challenges. We about to be doing Blood. Mm -hmm. We really about to be dropping a lot of exclusive content for y'all. So if one episode a week is not enough, y'all about to get some more content on Patreon. Yes, y'all be saying, oh, make the episodes longer. I need twice a week. Well, this is your opportunity to see us twice a week. And also, you kind of get you're gonna get a look into our lives mm -hmm. and know us on a personal level. Mm -hmm. So make sure y'all sign up at patreon.com backslash Poor mind, sign up today. There's different tiers. So if you want audio only, you can just listen. If you want video and audio, we have that too. And also we have a top, top tier where you get exclusive access to merch, shows, all that good mm -hmm. stuff. So go to patreon.com backslash poor minds and sign up today. Period. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp and 85 South listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash 85 South. Hey, what's up? Clayton English. It can be tough to train your brain to stay in problem-solving mode when faced with a challenge in life. But when you learn how to find your own solutions, there's no better feeling. A therapist can help you become a better problem-solver, making it easier to accomplish your goals, no matter how big or small. If you're thinking of giving therapy a try, BetterHelp is a great option. It's convenient, accessible, affordable, and entirely online. Get matched with a therapist after filling out a brief survey and switch therapists at any time. When you want to be a better problem solver, therapy can get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash 85 South today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp.com slash 85 South. Hey man, English Major Merch live right now. ClaytonEnglish.com. Go get you some, man. We got all the HBCU inspired colorways, man. Go get it. You know what it is. Let's go. What's up, y'all? It's your girl Lex P. And it's your girl Dre and Nicole. And y'all know who got the most fire merch in the game. 85 and poor minds, of course. Period. So y'all been asking about our rap tees that we had on tour for the longest. Our tour tees and the rap tees. They are both on the site right now available. Y'all go ahead, go to buypoorminds.com and get your t-shirts before they sell out. Yes, and also y'all know it's about to get cold outside and 85 just dropped some fire merch for the women. I'm mm -hmm. telling you, they got that all brown fit, the all blue fit, the red. It's going super, super crazy. So make sure y'all go to 85 apparel.com and get you a fit. I'm telling y'all, it's super comfy. It's airport outfits. You know, a little sneaky link outfit. Mm -hmm. Whatever you need. And I'm telling y'all, they are not restocking this, okay? It's exclusive for this season. So make sure y'all go to 85apparel.com buypoorminds.com and get y'all merch right now. Yes. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, like I was saying, man, like talk about the British station. <laughs> yeah, now you out there like a like old boy of a players club. Like, man, I can get in there, man. I bought all the MGCDs, man. <laughs> Hold up, that was on my show. Look, look. <laughs> Nah, it's, it's gonna be a vibe, man. You gotta really think nah, about you it. Guys are, you guys are big, big money in the business. Nah, nah they're gonna hold you they out. They'll be like, look, you can come in, you just gotta wait. Wait for Steve to stop talking. Yeah. Steve, Steve talking right now. Oh, I can't. <laughs> you gotta pay to get him. Yeah, oh, you, let me see your wrist. Steve, oh, Steve, you ain't got Steve to Steve wrist back. Nah, Steve gonna drop that. Yeah. Man, Steve is just, um. What if he come out there and really be Steve? He gonna have that goddamn cigar. The cigar didn't buy. See, most of you niggas in here is group. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker, say it. I'ma say it. That's what's wrong with me, motherfucker. Why you think I work so motherfucker? No. <laughs> with the cigar and everything. Oh, that nigga gonna have some feet out of everything. Boots of sevens. Listen here. When I met my. Larger. <laughs> Tell you one thing, man. First thing you gotta do, stop doing, stop getting all this loose pussy. That's the first one. No. Nah, it's gonna be a shout vibe, out to man. Steve Harvey. Shout, out, shout out to Steve Harvey. Oh, shit, I'm coming. I gotta yeah, come yeah, this. Nah, it's gonna be a whole vibe, He's man. Oh, nah, yeah. I'm still better than man. <laughs> what? I fuck with Steve. I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna stay on his ass though, cause he called me Miss Seal. Yeah. I'm gonna keep Miss Steve Harvey just lined up every time his name is every brought time. up. Listen here. Keep my name out your motherfucking mouth. Do your little show. Do your little show. Do your little show. Do your little show. There's more things in the world to talk about. Do your little show. That's the first time I came on the show. <laughs> nah, it's gonna it's gonna be a vibe, man. So no. investfest.com, man. I want y'all to pull up. Ed, ed, edutainment at its finest. I can't wait to see everybody in Atlanta this weekend, man. It's gonna like the energy last year was crazy, so I know this year is just gonna be like phenomenal, man. I wanna speak at the next one. Pull up. You be making be, investment. It's gonna be what not to invest in. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be an uninvestment. <laughs> uninvestment? Nigga, yeah, you come in there. What you invest that, in? That's the Get out that shit immediately, boy. <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna be the panel. Yeah. Uninvestments. Yeah. The uninvestment they go to that radio panel. shack. Still don't go on that radio shack. Nigga bought, nigga bought an old radio shack. And let's go have on a McDonald's or something. McDonald's? McDonald's. We'll, we'll kill him, because our ice cream I'm machine will stay working 24 hours. Only one in the city. Nigga, we don't even get, we, hey, I'm telling you, bro. We got to be a contract. You get, we got to be able to have our own. the first McDonald's <laughs> with two <laughs> ice cream machines. Working nigga. at the same time. <laughs> what? Murder. We never down the ice. We got we to gotta be granted a license where we don't have to follow, because McDonald's make you get a machine, then it's got to be repaired by the, that's why they always want No, but what if we get, not high people what work. if we get two of them though? They ain't never put two of them in there. Simultaneous ice cream machine. But you using them both at the same time, you just got one on backup, ready to go. One being clean, one is being the main ice cream machine. That way it take, it's like a 50-50 chance of like, even if one fuck up, you still got one, you feel Yo, me? Yo, this is the highest well, conversation be I've been involved in. <laughs> it's like, this is a true it's high This is what you're supposed to tell us. I'm where we outside. should invest in. Yeah, yeah this is where we need you here, because well, look. Because it sounds like the problem, man. <laughs> no, you don't right, need I, a McDonald's, you, you just go, need We got to you one more. You remember this one we were talking yeah, about? with the big bitches, y'all right. be The big bitches. Me and, <laughs> me and Clayton, we want to open our own Pizza Hut, but we want the recipe from 1996. Okay. Okay. The real, real piece that we used to like. From 96. How you getting that recipe? We want, that's where you come in. I can't help you with that, though. Yeah, you can. <laughs> I can help you buy the building. No, nah, yeah, you can. I can help you buy the building. Hey, can't never could. Can't never could. That's a gem. Can't never could. But I'll help you buy the building, my nigga. All right, man. <laughs> we'll figure out the yeah, rest. Yeah, I'll figure out part. the rest. So I'll help you get the financing for the, the building. The crazy part is somebody who watched this show is going to be in the comments and going to tell us exactly who to call. Yeah. That's All the fact. old pizza is down there gone, man. They either daycare or. Strip club. Yeah. yeah. I seen that shit on camera. I mean, well, I'm my baby. You see? That's why we don't take him. <laughs> I was just saying, because somebody turned the Pizza Hut to a brain shop and they called it Pizza Hell, but I ain't know if that was the name. Oh, so like, he not bullshit, though. Know, they like, that they do got a fucking weed store over there that used to be a Pizza Hut. They That's just crazy. Changed the colors and That's put some crazy. pictures in the window. Nah, this was a vibe, man. I appreciate you guys. Yeah, for, man. No, man, for anything you me, ever need forward, from bro. us, man, you know exactly where we are, but this, we moving, though. Where y'all going? Yeah, we got our own studio. Nice. Studio! Yeah. Nice. We got a studio. Yeah. Nice. 
man, I'm about to put that. about three vending machines in that bitch. Smart. Y'all better move. get paper like a motherfucker. You, you, know, you know we got the vending machine place for y'all. Man, I'm putting backwoods, condoms, <laughs> all type of shit up in there. <laughs> It's really gonna be a convenience store. You feel me? <laughs> How much land they got? Who? On them tiny homes. Uh, them shits ain't got no land, bro. It's like. Can I make a tall, tiny home? A tall, tiny <laughs> home? Tall, tiny home. Tall, tiny home. <laughs> Just a little, <laughs> little bit more for me. You got the money, you can do whatever you, you want. You can go up. So about 200000 <laughs> out the door. You can do whatever you want. You I got the bread. another 20 in to make it tall. Make it a tall, tiny home. 220. Cover it. Is it gonna get 3D printed? Or how y'all making these motherfuckers? Nah. <laughs> but nah, they are doing a lot of 3D printed homes now. That's, that's crazy about it though. But nah, these are regular construction. They just doing the three little pigs in real life. <laughs> these tiny homes are made of straw. These tiny homes are made of everything. sticks. Uh, no. These tiny homes is made of bricks. <laughs> Get it? The world is yours, my brother. The world is yours. Ain't that crazy? They were teaching kids at a young age that if you want a nice house, you gotta have bricks. Gotta have bricks. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You talking about some hot shit now. <laughs> <laughs> MG, once again, yeah, man, I we appreciate you stopping the trap. 85 Trap Show. But I didn't even go nowhere. Let's take a picture, man. Yeah, yeah let's do that. Appreciate y'all, man. No, we appreciate you. We can sit down, fuck it. It's four people. That, that look crazy, just four black men standing up. That looks suspicious. <laughs>